Welcome to another episode of Behind the Scenes, where we talk to people from film and television. Today we have in studio as a guest, and we're very pleased to have him here, George Lyons, NFB film officer. Film officer. What is a film officer? It sounds like you arrest people who make uh, bad movies, George. <laughs> Could you describe that a bit? Okay, a film officer is a, a name that, that they gave us, a, kind of a generalist name. I like it because it is generalist. It says uh, we do all kinds of things. So. But I think it comes from uh, the war years when the National Film Board was created. And uh, they still had those structures, and uh, although our, we don't uh, salute anybody, uh, we have the job of film officer. Basically, it's uh, a liaison job that we have. There's a military term for you, a liaison. But it's basically reaching out with our films to the public. Um, this is what our job is, basically. Well, you haven't been there since the world, Second World War, but you have been no. there for quite a while, 25 years. Tell us a little bit about how things have changed at the NFB. Well, the biggest change that's happened at the National Film Board is that films now are easily accessible on video. Since almost everybody has a VCR, uh, you can now, anybody who desires to can dip into the, uh, the golden trough that we have. Previously, you had to be uh, often coerced uh, by teachers to look at films, and uh, the Film Board um, developed the kind of a, a bad reputation, shall we say, with some students, because the teacher would trot out the same film year after year, and uh, frequently it lost its relevance after time. So uh, right now you have access to films that go, go back as far as they go. Well, we're going to eventually be showing some clips from uh, some of the hotter new releases that, uh, that have been coming out recently. But honestly, I know you're a booster, but how many, how, what percentage of these films are <coughs> any good, in your opinion? Uh, the percentage, I think, uh, I think it's a fairly high percentage, actually. Uh, in, my, uh, in my role as a booster, uh, naturally, I tend to uh, promote the, the films as all terrific. But no, I know they're, they're not all terrific. And the very the interesting thing about the film board is that we produce uh, some 150 films a year. So we have a vast variety of films. So the films that you think are terrific, the next person will not necessarily think are terrific. So the, the great thing about the film board is that you do have choice. So if you know what you want, you're going to get some great films just for you. And of course, it's a, a government branch of some sort. So yeah. has the recession had an impact on, <coughs> its, uh, on the quality of the films or its funding? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think that's one thing that uh, I have to give uh, credit to the, uh, to the government for is not having you know, grossly cut back the film board. The film board has a small, small budget, actually, in comparison to most of the, uh, the heavyweights, particularly the CBC. We're uh, uniquely economical in a sense that we produce films, and that's what we concentrate on. It costs, I think, the average taxpayer something like $3 or something per head across the country per year. So uh, with that kind of budget, we can produce uh, quite a lot of films, and the variety is, uh, is basically the keynote. And, uh, of course, uh, the NFB is, in a sense, as Canadian as the Maple Leaf uh, of course, we're always being lauded at the Academy Awards for our NFB. Right. Has, has it kept up? Has it kept up over the last few years? I think so. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who hearken back to the good old days and stuff like this. But, uh, no, I think uh, what's, uh, one of the changes that took place, you were mentioning the 25 years, is that the film board has expanded uh, from a, a small uh, coterie of filmmakers housed in Montreal and living out of the cafeteria, basically, at our headquarters to uh, centers across the country. So you have a, a very Western point of view from the Edmonton studio, from the Vancouver studio, from the Atlantic studio. So there are some very, uh, and we also generate a fair amount of co-productions with local filmmakers in these areas. So you get a very local picture and a very honest and uh, lively picture, I think, of the Canadian mosaic. Well, if we're ready, I'd like to have a look at one of our clips called Between the Solitudes, uh, Josh Fried work. Have you any? Uh Okay, that's an Irene Angelico film, and uh, uh, it's very much in the tradition of the documentary film. And in this case, what we've done is uh, we've, we've targeted somebody like Josh Fried, who's got a great sense of humor, and put him on film to describe a situation, in this case, uh, the Anglos and how they feel about living in Quebec. So uh, if we can, uh, I, th I don't know what we've queued up. I think we've shown, we're showing the first part of the film. A little bit of the beginning. And, the uh, beginning, and uh, the feeling is there, I think. If you look closely, you can see uh, where he lives, so don't uh, go knocking on his door. Here's a bit of Between the Solitudes. But my real attachment is not to Quebec or to Canada. At heart, I'm a Montrealer, the citizen of a virtual city-state that mixes a little of Paris with a touch of Manhattan. No matter how bad our political battles, we get along well in the streets, especially in our seven-day summer, 
when they're as crowded as the beach. Our differences just make things interesting, and the tension is creative. It gives life an unpredictable edge. In other cities, people just eat. But here, we squeeze a celebration out of even ordinary events. Every meal is another festival, featuring a different celebrity every night. The most challenging part of Montreal life is the French language, at least for an Anglo like me. I've spent years trying to master it, and I still don't know all the rules. Bonsoir, monsieur. Ah, bonsoir. Quel sont les gâteaux avec vous? I have uh, carrot cakes. Apple pie on almond paste and chocolate and pancake. Ah, c'est bon la dernière ou non? Fantastic. Voilà, je prends une et mon sens vous Thank you. Montreal is an easygoing place to live, as long as you don't read the papers. Unfortunately, as a journalist, I read them all the time. The papers are a brutal reminder that the government of Quebec isn't always as tolerant as its people. And the most visible symbol of this is the sign law, Bill 178. Montreal is changing, and like many Anglos, I wonder whether there'll be room in it for us. Well, that's a pretty emotional debate. Nobody can accuse you of not having brought enough uh, supplies here with us today. We're going to play a game here, and you can play along at home if you like. It's recognize that poster. Now. This is a recent release from the National Film Board. Can you tell us a wee bit about that, Mr. Lyons? Okay, well, uh, that's about the Challenger. I call it a Challenger and Industrial Romance. And uh, the poster is set up so at the bottom you can write down uh, where the film is going to be shown. For example, if you're showing it at the, uh, the local factory or something and you want your people to come and see it on Wednesday afternoon, there's plenty of room there to pencil in where it's going to be and uh, at what time and so on. So posters, for some of our films, we do have wonderful posters like this one and they can be used for that purpose. A lot of people use our films to, uh, uh, to show to other people rather than just look at themselves. And uh, these are uh, the communicators, as I call them, teachers, um, group leaders, and what have you. Now we have a poster called The Dingles, one of the favorite films that teachers have uh, at the elementary school level. Again, you'll see at the bottom it has a nice white strip on which the teacher can write when she's going to be showing the film, and so on and so forth. And it's a, uh, an extract, naturally, in this case, from uh, the film. This happens to be a film based on a book that's quite uh, well read in the, uh, amongst the youngsters at the school level. Recommendable, I presume? Absolutely. A lot of fun to watch. Yeah? Especially if you like cats. Let's get a look at this one now. Okay, what have we it's got here? Not oh, only is it's it beautiful, down. it's upside down. Yeah. Let's have a look at that. What's this okay. one, George? This is uh, the creative process. Um, if you were at all intrigued by Norman McLaren, later we'll look at Norman McLaren's film, one of his films. Uh, this is a great film that traces the history of Norman McLaren uh, from the very, very beginning. And again, as you can see at the bottom, it has a white space that you can use if you're going to show it to anybody. Ooh. But there's a commitment there of some two hours to see that film. Two whole hours. And okay. it's well worth, the, well worth the commitment, I'd say. And what's this one? This is our uh, second best seller, actually, of our films, Cries from the Deep. Uh, Jacques Cousteau visits the, uh, the St. Lawrence River and finds all kinds of wonders there to behold. A film you can rent uh, in the National Geographic uh, style, if you will. So anybody can have access to these movies. This is the, uh, the thrust of what you're Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. And the posters are there. Ask for them because many people forget about it, especially people who are wanting to advertise the film within their schools or within their uh, businesses or wherever. You've lugged along another film called Getting Started, a 12-minute piece uh, right. that you... Uh, One of my favorite films because uh, I'm a procrastinator, my dear friend. And I think I'm joined by hundreds of thousands of other people who are procrastinators. But it's a great film for time management. And so it's used by businesses, actually. It's a great laugh. And uh, we watch the, uh, the main character uh, uh, fuss and fret and do everything except uh, sit down and play the piano. So here we go, a little bit of a, a pianist. <laughs> 